Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. Yes. Introduce yourself and tell us what you do. <laughs> well, uh, I've got a very big CV, but yeah, my name is uh, Jason Mpepo, and I'm a theatre artist. I um, run uh, Patsime Entertainment Trust as well as the Jason and Pepper Little Theatre. So yeah, I'd say briefly that's who I am. Do you have a role model and who are they? Uh, well, in the arts, yes. Uh, my role model is uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, yeah, that's my role model. Please do not ask me why. <laughs> but yeah, Samuel L. Jackson is my role model and I like his acting. His professional is amazing. He's one of the uh, most amazing um, actors in Hollywood. Mm. In your opinion, is it important to have outstanding women to look up to? Yeah, of course. Uh, look, I think my mother was an outstanding woman to look up to. I mean, she she was there for me. She she provided everything that I needed from when I was a child to when I was older. So yeah, I think my mom was my biggest role model. Okay. Yeah. In your opinion, is it why is it important to amplify the work of the feminist movement? Uh, I think it's important to amplify the work of feminist uh, women in the feminist movement uh, because I mean it helps them uh, do the work that they need to do better uh, I think it leverages uh, uh, the work that they are doing uh, <clears throat> in different uh, sp spheres uh, uh, of the society and um, I mean supporting feminists uh, means that we are supporting the movement uh, against uh, GBV because GBV is one of the ills that is there in our society so i believe that supporting feminist uh, women is the best thing that we can do if we are going to fight against uh, gbv in our society in what way do you think campaigns like the 16 days against gbv can help to end violence uh well as a communicator i think uh, the 16 days uh, campaigns will help in terms of giving more information sharing uh, uh, information of where people can go when probably they um, may be faced with violence. I think um, as a communicator, it's an opportunity also during this period to actually give more people more information and create uh, dialogue platforms with people around uh, uh, gender-based violence. So for me, I think 16 days of activism is good and perfect. What color is associated with the campaign? Orange. Orange. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this year's campa uh, th uh, campaign theme? Uh, it should be end, uh, end violence against women, I think. I think. <laughs> Orange our world. <laughs> end violence against women. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, what does that theme mean to you? Um, I, I think I, I'm not sure really about the orange part, uh, like Orange the world, but I think when when we talk about end violence against women, we are trying to advocate for um, the elimination of violence within the society and especially against women and girls. So that's uh, what I think and yeah, as a layman maybe. So why is it 16 days? Should it be longer? I think it should be longer, but uh, I think putting it in 16 days makes people put their minds together and concentrate on it and say at this period at this time we're going to be doing this but I want to believe that in everything that we do in our everyday lives it should be 16 days uh, of um, ending violence against women and it should be 365 days of ending violence against women so it should be every day but at this point it's really because we just want to concentrate on a certain particular theme and talk about it and intensify it so really I think it's important to have 16 days and I think it's long enough and short enough. So who should participate in this campaign? Everybody, absolutely everybody should participate uh, because men perpetrate violence, women perpetrate violence, uh, men are survivors, women are survivors, so everybody should participate. So it shouldn't be a particular grouping of people. Yeah. Yeah. What forms of GBV do you know? Ha! Ah, quite a lot. Um, there is um, physical violence, there is emotional violence, there is um, financial violence. Um, I mean, we can even talk about 
the communicative violence where one is uh, abusing uh, someone based on who they are so through communication so there are different forms of uh, violence that can be there so really violence comes in many forms i think would you say there's been progress made since 1991 when the 16 days against um, gbv campaign started yeah, I'd, I'd say that there's been a lot of progress that uh, has been there because you'd find that um, a lot of information has been dispersed, they're d disseminated. You find that um, a, a lot of people know uh, these things, but then sometimes then about the cultural barriers that come with it, the religious barriers that come with it, that then erode the gains that are being made. But I think there's really a lot of progress that has been made when we talk about uh, eliminating uh, gender-based violence. What one thing would you say to the group that started this campaign in 1991? I'd say that if, if they had not started this kind of campaign, if you hadn't started this kind of campaign, would not be where we are today. I think a, a lot of, uh, would have witnessed a lot of casualties uh, or deaths amongst women and men uh, because people would not have info, enough information. And I think by starting this campaign, they've also um, made governments realize that there is a need to upheld, uphold women's rights and there's need to uphold men's rights and girls rights as well as boys rights so I, I want to believe that these people started a movement that is gone international and a movement that is making waves in terms of trying to eliminate gender-based violence amongst people do you think GBV can be eradicated no it, can, it, 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 it can never be eradicated as long as there are cultural barriers as long as there are religious barriers as long as there is patriarchy which is one of the things that fuel gender-based violence so as long as people do not respect um, each other in terms of respecting the rights of women respecting the rights of men then we will not eliminate gender best violence but the moment we begin to have this consciousness of respecting the rights of everybody concerned then maybe we can work towards eliminating and not completely eliminating it okay do you think the pandemic has affected um, GBV in any way indeed the pandemic has affected GBV in so many ways like for example I mean there are there are a lot of men uh, during the lockdown who did not go to work who did not go to work and because of that they stayed mostly at home and they, they were at home um, they, they, they then begin began to face a lot of uh, challenges I mean with there are women whom they do not normally stay with every day so because of that you know people started fighting uh, st people started quarreling because they were staying in one place together all the time and so this I think for me has uh, fueled a lot of uh, gender based violence because men were not going to work men were not spending time away from their women or their wives and so whilst they were at home there were a lot of things that then started coming up issues they could be maybe issues to do with maybe a woman finds a message in their husband's phone and they start fighting over that or maybe a man finds something that is not okay they start fighting about that so i think uh, the, the the pandemic really did uh, a lot of harm amongst people because of that uh, what's the one challenge that you have faced in trying to fight um, GBV? Um, I'll go back again to the issue of um, cultural barriers. Uh, like for example, there are quite a number of um, project activities that we do in rural communities. You find that because of the cultural barriers, there's no way you then speak uh, about gender-based violence without addressing these cultural barriers so as long as the cultural barriers still exist and are still practiced then you find that uh, you have faced a lot of difficulties in trying to uh, talk uh, about issues to do with gender-based violence or maybe to deal with gender-based violence issues within communities uh, what do you think needs to be done to increase or raise more awareness on gbv I think uh, the government uh, needs to play a, a, a part in terms of uh, supporting women 
um, uh, they need to play a part in terms of supporting young girls, especially in schools. They need to play a part in supporting women who go to work because there's a lot of gender-based violence that is happening in these uh, communities, that is the school community, the workplace environment. So I think the government needs to come up with policies, policies that can address the gender-based violence issues within these communities. And also you find that in most of these communities, these communities are closed communities and rarely do you find uh, program activities going into these uh, communities. So I think the government needs to do more in terms of policy to address these issues. Uh, interesting you mentioned that. Um, so you would agree that the state has a role to play in the fight against GBV? Indeed, indeed. And, and I think it's really at policy level. And, and I think the other thing, I mean, when we look at policy level and looking at the state itself, is really looking at the laws that can be put in place. Like, for example, if a... I mean, a, a woman is raped, what kind of laws can be put in place to ensure that such crimes cannot be prevalent? You find that sometimes some of the crimes are really quite lenient and so that then makes them prevalent. Or maybe you might find that maybe one goes in uh, for a few weeks and then their case is thrown away, there's not enough evidence and the like. So I think the state needs to play a, a bigger role in terms of ensuring that all the things that are needed are, are in place. Like for example, recently there, there was the issue of uh, DNA um, uh, testing uh, when, we, when it comes to um, maybe for example if someone has been raped and they want to check the DNA samples and maybe they do not have the equipment available to be able to do the DNA sampling. So you find that that already is a limiting factor and that then affects um, a case if, 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 if at all a case has to uh, go ahead in trying to investigate whether there was some form of rape or, or violence or whether there was no form of rape or violence. All right. So what has been the most memorable highs for you when raising awareness against GBV? Um, well, the most memorable highs um, are when um, we uh, did a campaign uh, with the Ministry of Education and uh, this was um, in uh, Plum Tree and, um, and uh, when we did this campaign I, re I, I remember that um, a lot of uh, government officials came uh, to this event and they pledged uh, to um, begin to support uh, programming within that uh, province that has to do with uh, GBV and eliminating GBV. And uh, after that program, there were a lot of uh, outcomes that came out of it, uh, outcomes such as uh, the government itself pledging to ensure that they, they will want to have a zero tolerance in terms of uh, GBV within the communities of Plantry. And then after a month or so, we then saw these things start, start, starting to be implemented. And, and, and when they were implemented, it then re made us realize that what we had done had so much impact at government level and as well as at community level. So I think for me that was the biggest highlight uh, when I did a campaign ag uh, against GBV uh, within uh, communities in Zimbabwe. All right. um, where can people who experience GBV get help? Um, what I know is um, people who experience GBV can get help uh, at the nearest police station as well as uh, the nearest health service uh, center. But uh, according to what I know is that um, one has to report to the nearest health center as soon as possible, uh, especially, for example, if one has been raped, you need to access the services as soon as possible, within 72 hours, and then a police report can then be made later. But I think what's important is really to access the health services so that uh, one is helped on time. Um, how best can society assist with the fight against GBV? Um, I think one of the 
major ways of doing it is to ensure that whenever you uh, witness GBV, I mean within the community, assist that person in terms of accessing health services as well as uh, accessing legal services, that is the police. Uh, I think that's the best. Do not keep quiet about it uh, because keeping quiet will only fuel or perpetuate uh, this kind of violence within a community. So there's need for community support, uh, community vigilance and rallying together to be able to do what needs to be done and ensure that one is assisted. What does one need to do if they want to join the fight against GBV? Well, <laughs> you can join the fight from anywhere. <laughs> you can ever either join it from, uh, I mean, the comfort of your home. I mean, through social media, uh, you can do campaigns through social media, uh, campaigning against GBV. It could be on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on YouTube. I mean, anyhow, you can actually do blogs or vlogs and uh, talk about uh, the ills of gender-based violence. But I think you can also visit uh, most non governmental organizations that are already currently working on it and then you play your part but also as an individual just play your part that's how best you can uh, join the fight against GBV. What can one do if they know a victim of GBV? They should assist that person they should report this case that they, they should make sure that this person is aware or has the information of where to go there are a lot of organizations working in zimbabwe and in different communities that can help does your organization have a policy on gbv yes we do have a policy on gbv and how has that policy helped in your opinion in, in a lot of ways uh, it informs our programming uh, so whatever we want to do, we first look at how gender is fitting in. And uh, I mean, like for example, uh, in terms of the, the makeup of the management or the board, I mean, we have made it a point that women are represented in these uh, in, in the in the board of Patsime. They are well represented in the management of Patsime and also within all staff members. So we dis do not discriminate on gender uh, within our organization. How has the organization raised awareness against GBV this year? Uh, in uh, in so many ways, uh, we we've done road shows, we've done uh, short skits, uh, short videos. We've done we have a radio drama that is uh, currently running on uh, on radio, and every episode has something to do with GBV. So, I mean, we we are communicators. That was that's what we do, and that's what we are constantly doing so 365 days like i said we are talking about gender-based violence in all our programs mm. do you have more activities planned for beyond just the 16 days period around GBV? We, indeed like i said we had activities planned already that we were already doing and during the 16 days of activism we intensified it working with other partners and then after that we then continue with our programming so yes we have uh, work that we do around gbv that mainstreams gbv uh, in our programming so yeah that's what we do every day okay and finally uh, any quick message to young women and men out there well, a quick message is always difficult, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, look, uh, like I said earlier on, um, fighting GBV does not need NGOs, it does not just need the government, it needs everybody. Everybody should take their part in fighting against GBV. Play your role and you'll find that uh, as you play your role, you are contributing to the elimination if we are going to eliminate gender-based violence in Zimbabwe. No, that's it for today. Thank you so much for your 30 questions. Thank you so much <laughs> for the 30 questions. <laughs>